Welcome to another exciting episode of The Intellect, Youth with the Nation at Heart. My name is Daniel Adaja. And on today's episode, we will be speaking with prominent people who would be giving advice on seizing the opportunity. Amidst this COVID-19 pandemic, there is need for young people to begin to harness their potentials and also look for better ways to engage in business and also seek the best advice in this particular time. So on today's episode of The Intellect, we would be going on a journey to speaking with people who would give the right advice to young people and also share their experiences and their knowledge. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, my name is Tony Cole, uh, co-founder of the Sahara Group, a transformational politician and currently studying at the Blavatnik School of Government in Oxford as a transformational leader fellow. Thank you. I think at the time uh, of starting, one of the great opportunities that came up was that there was an opening for indigenous, young, strong-minded Nigerians to go into a business that was totally dominated by uh, foreign companies. At the time of beginning, all we heard back then was that Nigerians cannot do this. Nigerians are not capable of raising the finance, not capable of doing the business in the oil and gas sector at that time. And so that provided a huge opportunity for young, uh, vibrant Nigerians to go into a business that no Nigerians were doing at the time. I think it's a mindset thing. Uh, so essentially that, uh, that uh, saying goes first of all by saying talent is uh, universal, but it's universal but opportunities are not. Which means that everybody has talent, everybody has a skill, but the opportunities are something that you have to look out for. So your mindset has to tell you that you have to find and you can find the opportunity. And so it's a mindset thing. If you know that you are on the lookout for opportunities, you will see them. They will open up for you. I think first of all is uh, you are going to come across a lot of people that don't believe in you and they are going to want to stop what you are seeing. You can see it, but they cannot. So the first aspect of it is that do you believe in yourself? And once you believe in yourself and you believe in the purpose for which you are uh, on the road for, then those discouraging things stop playing a major role in, in life. So I think for, for us, it was coming to believe in who we were and understanding that there was a road and a purpose that allowed us to overcome all the discouraging uh, aspects of people who are there and they can help and they can open a door and they can make things happen but choose not to do it because they don't believe in where you're going. But for us, believe in yourself, believe in where you're going and you, you will open many doors. Absolutely, and I'll give you three. The first aspect of it is that relationships matter. You need to have a good network and that network will begin to give you information that will allow you to see opportunities. So networking and relationship, very important first. The second is character, your integrity, because regardless of what happens, once, that opportunity, once the opportunity comes in and you go and take it, if you don't have the right character, it will dry up. It will definitely dry up. So you must have the right character, which is hinged on integrity. You must have the right networks, which, will, which is hinged on relationship. And then the last aspect of it is that you must be a doer. You can't just talk, 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 talk. So you must be somebody who is ready to implement. So you get the relationships. In other words, some, through your network, somebody is going to be relying on you to do something. You see the opportunity, it's open to you. Now, are you going to do? You must be ready to push it through. Those things, make sure you are a doer, make sure you have the right networks and, uh, for, the, for the relationships that come and have the integrity and character to see it through. I think on, on the contrary, what you would find out is that if you are a pioneer or you are an entrepreneur that sees ahead of the curve, then policies will not exist. 
In other words, the policies and the laws at the time that you are starting and you are seeing ahead do not exist for what you are about to do. So there's an advantage. The first advantage for you is that you can then shape the landscape that you are operating in. And you must work and operate in that direction. So one of the things that we saw was that when we were starting, many things that, uh, many things that should have helped us policy-wise did not exist. But we drove it and then the policy comes and catches up with it. Then you drive it, then policy comes and catches up with it. So my, my, my uh, advice to entrepreneurs who can see ahead is that don't wait for the policy to come because you are already ahead of the policy. Just move with it. Drive the policy chain. The policy will catch up with you. Okay, so the first thing is that Remember, one, believe in yourself. You are unique. That much I can assure you that there's nobody, there's no two persons on earth that are the same. So the first aspect of it is believing in yourself. The second thing that you must do after you believe in yourself is know that you have a purpose and your purpose is different from the next person. Now, once you know your purpose and you're on that journey of your purpose, you know that your purpose will always make a way for you. So the third thing is that once you are on the journey towards achieving your purpose, keep your eye open for the people and the networks that will be coming along the way to help you meet your purpose. So keep that. The fourth thing is that do not abuse those people. Do just realize that everybody that you are meeting along the way has come to help you get to your goal, which means that your character and your integrity must be firm. The last thing that you must hold on to, which kind of uh, surrounds everything, is that God must be your anchor. He is the one that allows you to do everything. You see, without Him and without faith, all of this that I've just said is useless. So you must hold on to him, you must believe in him, you have a higher calling and a higher purpose, and he's the one that will drive you through. So the, the first thing that I would say about life is that there would always be a crisis, some bigger, some smaller. But once you have the mindset and you understand that life is about ups and downs and crisis will come, then when you enter into one and you enter into a new one, then you already have the mindset of it. Now, for coronavirus, what it has shown us is that this is a big one. And because it's a big crisis, it means that the opportunities that will come out of it and the solutions required for these ones will be big ones. And so you can draw down big ideas. So for me, the first thing that I began to do when I saw and I understood that this was a big uh, thing was to begin to look at what are the solutions that will come out of this and what are the big solutions that will come out of this. The first problem that I saw that we now needed to address is that global supply chain, global supply chain in itself has been disrupted. It means now that we are going to be looking more inward and more at ourselves to determine how we are going to move forward. And it's in that it's in that that you begin to see an opportunity. So data has become a big opportunity. Uh, understanding ourselves and analyzing who we are manufacturing internally has become a very big opportunity. Agriculture in itself has become a big opportunity, but that value chain of agriculture is an even bigger opportunity. So with all of these things in mind, we begin to look at how do we use this whole pandemic to make sure that we're a better nation. And that for me is where the answer is. So Nigerians, what I want you to understand, right, is that the future, the future depends on you. And when I say this, anything that we're going to be in 20 years time, anything we're going to be in 30 years time, anything we're going to be in 40 years time, you don't wait until then to make it happen. You have to start now, now. So, in our minds, we need to begin to ask ourselves uh, what type of country are we looking to build? If you understand the country you want to live in in 10 years from now, then you know that you need to start now. If you can picture in your mind what type of country you want to live in in 20 or 30 years, you need to start from now. And that is where the difference is. We have begun to work on making sure that that Nigeria that we want to live in, we see it happen now. We begin to work on it now. And guess what? The last word for you as Nigerians is that you can do it. It is really in your hands. If coronavirus has taught you something, it should have taught you that you are alone and the solution that you have is in your hands. If you are waiting for the solution to come from anybody else, it's not going to come. So let us put our hands together as Nigerians to build the kind of nation that we are comfortable living in. God bless you.
Hi everyone, my name is Musumola Omoru. I'm the Chief Implementation Officer for Farm Shop, um, a retail brand in Nigeria. Um, we're involved with food distribution, processing and packaging. Okay, so some of the principles that have helped me stay afloat is the fact that I'm constantly open to learning on learning and relearning um, certain techniques, principles. Um, knowledge for me is a, a continuum, so I'm constantly, I'm very flexible. I, I learn from my staff, I learn from the, my business ecosystem. I'm very open to adopting new technology and I always dare say that I'm a sponge. I'm very happy to absorb and when the need to extract um, is necessary, I squeeze myself and expunge things that I don't, content that I don't require. Um, and so that has helped me stay. Because again, I'm in a, an industry where new solutions are coming up from time to time. I have learned to be flexible enough to adopt the new, do not necessarily throw away all of my old values and um, because they always come um, strong and necessary um, and I think above all of be, above all of that beyond learning is also the ability to stay tenacious because it's not a very easy um, industry so my ability to keep my focus on the goal the end goal at every point in time irrespective of the challenge that I face has also contributed to my success in the industry over the years. I believe that there are enormous opportunities for young people within the agribusiness space. Um, and not agribusiness alone, there are opportunities for young people generally. And the first advantage they have is the strength of youth. Young people need to begin to harness that gift. It's a gift. What I will give to be 20 years younger again is unimaginable. So that I could apply some of the lessons and um, experiences that I have now um, again in business. Young people have enormous opportunities. They just need to look in the right direction and learn to enjoy life as a journey and a process and not be in a hurry and by being in a hurry does not mean they shouldn't be driven or be challenged it's that they should not be under undue pressure i think the reason why many young people are missing out on a lot of opportunities is because they're refusing to enjoy the process um the enterprise journey as it were, especially for us on the continent as black people, is not a smooth sail. It's not. And so young people need to begin to bring the strength of their youth, the ability to leverage technology and bring innovation, bring a breath of fresh air into the business ecosystem. So when I started, there were a few favorable policies and there were some unsavory ones, to be quite honest. Um, some of the unsavory ones I would go over um, because then I was much younger. Um, there were no real support, as it were, for startups as we do have today. There were not, most of the um, technical assistance that were being provided were for more established brands and businesses. There was not a lot of provision and concern for early stage businesses in Nigeria. But today um, we do have a lot of maybe not even government policies directly but there are a few initiatives around the lack of those frameworks at the time also shaped my resilience in business and helped me stay, build, hone my own skills better. Um, having said that, one of the many policies that I know that I grappled with over the years was the free flow of 
products, imported variants of some of our products, for example, chickens. Because I started large, largely with producing chickens, there was a, an influx of products from neighboring countries and also, especially from Brazil, for many years, many years my business struggled. But you know, interestingly, sometime in 2019, there was a full closure of our borders to the, to, and, and a ban on the importation of frozen, frozen foods, especially poultry products and rice. And it began to birth a surge of um, innovations, innovative ideas around primary production, even distribution, and processing in country and so for me um, what I have learned is your ability to stay on irrespective of the difficulties um, is very critical for the survival of your business and the fact that I had managed to stay focused on the vision of our company overall the overarching goal has helped us um, stay relevant The biggest takeaway for me is that we're all connected. And whether we like it or not, as humans, we need to keep the fabric of humanity sewn and hewn together. We need to constantly work as a people to ensure that humanity is protected the pain of one person directly or indirectly impacts all of us and so in whatever i do as an individual as a member of a family unit one of the biggest lessons that covid taught me and i hope that many of us will take from it is that we must think about the greater good we cannot journey through life thinking about ourselves. We cannot journey through life thinking about ourselves. In whatever we do, whether you're running a business, your business must be thinking about preferring solutions for in the interest of the greater good of the larger society. My charge to you today is to keep hope alive, stay focused, learn when you need to, take advantage of every resource, every positive resource that is available to you because you just never know when that lesson, that experience will become relevant. Take nothing for granted, not people, not opportunities, not situations. Everything that happens to us in life is for a reason. And life is in seasons. And each one of us must enjoy where we are on our way to where we're going. So never let anyone or any situation make you think little of yourself. You count, you matter, you're relevant. The world needs you. Be the best you can be at every point in time. You never know who is watching. Help comes in very uncommon ways. You need to be prepared because the person who may be that angel investor that would help you take that birth, that dream or take it to scale or to another level may just be around the corner. So take nothing for granted. Do your best at what you do. Stay focused. And I'm sure at the end of the day, with resilience and grace from God, all your efforts will be crowned with good success. And I'm sure we'll be celebrating and sharing your journey somewhere along the line. Hello, my name is Alex Onya. I'm the managing partner at Robotics Center, Lagos.
Okay, earlier before now, I'm actually, I'm actually deep in software. I'm the CEO of EduK as well, so which we provide um, software services that actually help a lot of industries in Nigeria. So, um, for in terms of um, hardware and research, so I realized that one of the biggest things that we lack in Nigeria is research. We don't really produce anything. And I think if we wait for government, to we'll keep waiting for the government. So I decided, okay, you know what, why can't I make some investment and in, in terms of research and see how much we can produce. So I, I went to, recently in this February, I went to UAE. I interacted with a lot of them, a lot of people in the ministry. I wanted to see how things really work. So after my whole conversation and meetings with them, they encouraged me that you can actually do these things in your country since you already know that we have challenges with the government. So when I came back, we did a lot of investments. We tried to see how, and as we were coming back, it didn't even take time. The pandemic came and almost everything became a reality. Nobody can ship anything to you. You realize that you are stuck, you're not even going out. So we had to start uh, making use of the things we have. One of the first projects that we did was our ventilator. We understood it from engineering and the medical perspective, and we built something that really, really worked. So, and then we've also done some amazing ones, like even our temperature sensor that we did here is even way more robust than what you see in the market. It doesn't just, um, uh, what do you call it, it show you the temperature, it stores the data and it's also been integrated in the access control systems. So if your temperature is above 37.5, you can't even gain access to the building. Another project that uh, um, we actually developed um, quite a few weeks ago, uh, which has already been being used in some places is a sanitizing boat, like we see in other advanced countries. So this time around, like our schools are already demanding for it, hospitals are demanding for it, churches are demanding for it, and so many other places. And then actually one of the good things about us is that it's of high quality and it's also very, very affordable. So this is um, one thing, that, another thing that we've actually done at the center that has been really helpful to us here in Nigeria. And so many other amazing stuff we've done within this short period. So um, these are the things that have actually uh, inspired um, us in what we're doing at the center. And this is just a few. We are doing a lot of things. And in the next <laughs> two, three years, I believe that there are so many amazing things that are going to come out from the center. I believe everything is possible. It's just that some things might take longer time, some may take shorter time, and also just time and people. If you have the right people, then I, for probably if you have resources to make it work, it will, be, it will work. So my principle is everything is possible. Um, for young people, I think you also need to believe like, that everything is possible the way I do. And you know, most of the time when you say everything is possible, that means there will be definitely challenges on the way. But since you can see the end of the road at the beginning, it gives you an endurance to stay through and by the time you can see clearly, then I think everything will be possible for you. I think the future is do it yourself, meaning that you, you have to be the mechanic, you have to be your chef, you have to be your engineer, you have to be everything, meaning that you need to learn as much as you can learn. You have to depend less on people because everybody is social distancing, nobody wants to come close to you, nobody wants to help you, if you go to hospitals, everybody is running away. So that means you need to learn as much as you can learn. So aside from learning about the future and technology, you need to learn everything you need to survive. So do it yourself and see it as the future. And what I feel is that Nigeria, we, in Nigeria we have, everybody in Nigeria, if I can say, most of us are super talented. Um, and I think that since we know we are super talented, I think we should actually put a lot of our brain energy in trying to create new things and also helping our economy. And I believe that you know how Nigeria works, when they see progress, everybody aligns. If so many of us can actually work the way we are working and make a lot of significant progress, even the government will align with us. And I think that's the way that will help us in Nigeria. It's been an amazing journey in the last 13 weeks showing the Intellect TV Youths with a Nation at Heart. It has been a great opportunity to be able to share this experience with you and also to inspire a lot of young people while the youth is the future and the future is now. We say a big thank you to you all for being part of the season one of the Intellect Youth with a Nation at Heart. 
from us and the whole production team. We are grateful for you sticking by us and also staying with us throughout this time. Please do not forget that in this particular pandemic time, please remember to wash your hands regularly, use hand sanitizers, and stay safe. For more information, please log on to our website, www.theintellect.com.ng, and also follow us on all our social media platforms at The Intellect TV Show.